After finishing final exams last Saturday, the IPFW women's basketball team traveled to Cincinnati where they were defeated by a very talented Xavier University squad, 77-49. Tonight, the Mastodons are back home at the friendly confines of the Hilliard Gate Sports Center where they're getting ready to take on the University of Maryland of Baltimore County, otherwise known as UMBC. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Moss. Welcome to another edition of IPFW women's basketball here on College 56 Sports. Happy to be joined once again by Dave Scouton. And Dave, IPFW, a different team from last year, more talent, but still trying to learn how to mesh and work with each other. Yeah, they're looking for their personality to see how their game will go, and let's hope tonight they begin to put those pieces together. Well, their opponent tonight, UMBC, comes in with a record of six wins and two defeats. They're a member of the American East Conference. They've got three gals from the state of Indiana, which is one of the reasons why they are here in Fort Wayne, and they pose some problems. They play a Princeton style of offense. Yeah, this should be an interesting game to watch with that kind of a, a control offense from the Baltimore County team. Plus, both teams feature uh, an international flavor, so that'll make it interesting for, I think, for the fans of tonight's game. People to look for for UMBC, number 20, Mattia Pender is from the outside, averaging 15 points a game. Number 22, Amanda Robinson is their inside threat, averaging almost 11 points a game. For IPFW, the outside threat, Ashley Johnson, the junior from Kokomo. The inside threat, sophomore Julianne Hooner from Germany. We hope you're going to enjoy this telecast of IPFW Women's Basketball, starting lineups and the opening tip just ahead, right here on College 56 Sports. That book was all right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW, along with Dave Scout, and this is Mike Miles. We are moments away from tip-off our game tonight, featuring the retrievers of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, known as UMBC, and the IPFW Mastodons, Dave, uh, IPFW coming off a tough loss at Xavier, hoping to rebound and get their second win of the year. UMBC in the midst of a six-game road trip. They had a four-game winning streak snap last week against Drexel. So what do you think is going to happen here tonight? Well, both teams coming off of a loss are going to want to uh, look sharp, be sharp right from the very beginning. So it should be a good ball game. Well, we are ready to go. Our head official, Gary Roberts, throws the ball up, and the opening tap is controlled by... UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. will be going from right to left in the dark jerseys on your screen. They, as we said, work a Princeton-style offense. First shot of the game, a three-pointer by Christian Draben. No good. But the Retrievers get the offensive board, and now they spread it out again. That's Brittany Hughes, averaging nearly six assists a ball game, running the point. Inside shot is missed by Sherry Rohde, one of the three Hoosiers on this UMBC squad. And here comes IPFW for their first possession of the night. Ashley Johnson, a junior from Kokomo, with the ball. Maryland's uh, defense coming out man-to-man uh, -man right now. Julianne Huna in the block, off the glass and in. Good shot. Huna, 6'3 sophomore from Germany, gets the Mastodons off to a good start. They lead 2 to nothing. The key to that shot was that it was off the glass, Mike, and that they always have a better chance of that thing going in. Again, here is UMBC running the semi-deliberate style of offense. A long three-point shot missed, but Draben with an offensive board. That's two offensive rebounds now for the Retrievers. They're willing to work the ball and take their time. 30-second shot clock, of which there's 15 left. 
on this possession. And again, they work it back out. That's Heather Electro, number 24. Down to five seconds. Something's got to happen in a traveling car. Good thing, a uh, three-point shot that went in by number 44, Aaron Voss. So the Dons get a break, and they will get possession of the basketball. We have played uh, nearly two minutes of this contest. IPFW on top, two to nothing. Glad you could join us here on College 56 Sports. The first of six scheduled television contests this season involving Bruce Patterson's IPFW women's basketball team. Again, IPFW in the gray uniforms with blue numbers, blue trim. UMBC staying in that man-to-man -man defense. Nice feed, Starla Williams off the back of the iron, no good. Sherry Rohde with the board for UMBC. Here come the retrievers. Looks like IPFW is playing almost a matchup zone, Dave. Yeah, they're uh, making it awfully tough for Baltimore to get inside. Rohde kicks it off. Here's a three-point shot. Missed by Lutro. Dons with the ball on the run. A.J. Ashley Johnson working the offense. Yep, she didn't have a fast break, so she held up. Oh, and then we throw it away. Pass intended for Starla Williams. A little high, a little strong. First turnover on the part of IPFW. 17-16 left here in the first half of play. On a cold night in the Summit City. At least on the outside. Cold fall night, Mike. <laughs> Winner yeah, starts tomorrow. You keep reminding me of that, Doc. <laughs> Again, UMBC, patient, working the basketball. Inside feed. Oh, nice feed. Give and go on the shot up and in by Heather Electro. The back door cut. Works to perfection that time for the Retrievers, and we're tied at two. Ocano for three. Squared up and buried it. We need a lot of that. Warsaw graduate with her first points of the night. And the lead back up to three for IPFW, five to two. Again, UMBC patiently working the ball on the outside, looking for a cutter. Now they go with that uh, three-man weave outside and look to, to try to get the ball inside, and there they go, backdoor cut. Left-handed shot up and in by Brittany Hughes, the point guard, her first points of the night. And it's a 5-4 Mastodon advantage. Jenny Green, long range, misses the, sh the uh, rim altogether. Here comes Brittany Hughes up the floor for UMBC. And I remember the American East Conference. I'll tell you some of the other member schools here as we go along. And we've got a whistle and a foul underneath. Is going to be on Jenny Green, and we've got timeout on the floor. 15:49 left in the first half. 5-4 IPFW on top. You are watching IPFW Women's Basketball on College 56 Sports. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils. We only ask that you do your best and make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Welcome back to the Gate Center, everybody, along with uh, my good friend, the doctor, Dave Scouton. This is Mike Maas. IPFW leading 5-4, to 15-49 left in the first half, and it'll be UMBC basketball. And a couple of new faces in the UMBC lineup. 
And the first one is Mattia Pender. And she made her presence felt real quick, didn't she? She sure did. Knocks down the tray just like that. The Retrievers take their lead, 7-5. to five. Pender is a senior out of Croatia. Where's the number 20? Jana Lewis Carlisle knocks down a jumper just inside the arc. Sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. Ties the game at seven. IPFW staying with the man-to-man -man defense for the moment on this very patient offense. Hughes, left-handed three-point shot, misses the mark. Jana Lewis Carlisle brings the ball up the floor. So Johnson, Williams, Huna, O'Connell still on the floor for the Duns. Shot off the hands of Rohde. Duns retain possession, 10 seconds on the shot clock. AJ looks for some help. O'Connell, long range, off the glass. Yeah, and in. the bank is open. Hillary O'Connell with their second tray of the night. It's a 10-7 Mastodon lead. We're near the 14 and a half minute mark of the opening half. Voss looks for some help. Amanda Robinson again the weave. Three point shot up and in by Rohde. And it's an anything you can do, I can do better right now. That's we are tied 10-10. Right. Each team with two deuces and two trays. Oh, they called a long two instead. I stand corrected. Traveling call on IPFW. Couple more substitutions. Number 31 for IPFW is Tina Mullen, six foot freshman from Oslo, Norway. Yeah, our vantage point's awfully tough to see on that three point line down in the uh, corner in front of the IPFW bench. Well, it's a break for the Dons that they only called that shot by Rodi at two. Amanda Robinson wide of the mark. Here comes IPFW on the attack, I think. The Dons would like to run at every opportunity. Baltimore has uh, given the appearance of his own defense now. It should be a different look for the Dons, and they turn it over. Tough pass from Moen intended for Huna. Here come the Retrievers. After a dog in Baltimore, believe it or not, according to one of their assistant coaches. Man-to-man -man defense by Huna on Robinson. And now we got a whistle and some banging underneath. Hillary O'Connell will pick up her first foul of the night. I think that foul was the result of just being off balance uh, when the traffic got pretty thick going down the lane. Second team foul. And now loose ball and they scrape for it and it's going to be a jump ball called and possession will go to the Mastodons. 13.09 left here in the first half. It's IPFW 10. UMBC again, University of Maryland, uh, Maryland, Baltimore County, nine. Mr. Johnson brings the ball up the floor. This almost looks like a 3 2 zone that really collapses. Let's see how the Dons react to it. 12 on the shot clock. AJ. John Lewis Carlisle down to five. Johnson doubled up. Ball gets knocked out of bounds with one second on the shot clock. It'll be IPFW basketball. And they'll have to put that shot up just as soon as they touch it in there. Number 30, Morgan Hatton, a 5'10 sophomore from Potomac, Maryland, now on the floor for UMBC. Johnson inbounds it. Carlisle off the rim, no good. Nearly a long-range bucket for IPFW, but they get the offensive boards. O'Connell going after a third tray to three, and she's got it. This may be her night. Nine points for the Warsaw graduate. And it's a 13-9 Mastodon advantage. Well, Hillary is an excellent outside shooter. Inside move, shot up and missed by Rohde. Fight for the ball, and they say last touch by O'Connell. Bruce Patterson talks to one of the uh, uh, officials saying, no way. Giving a brand new shot clock. Okay, ball knocked out of bounds by John Lewis Carlisle. 13 9, Mastodon's on top. We've got 12 10 left in the first half. 
at DFW looking for their second win of the year. Pender. Back and forth. Three-point shot on the way, in and out, but offensive board off the glass and in. Credit Patton being Johnny on the spot. Yeah, that was pretty easy. She had, had good position, picked the ball up, had a put back. Lead cut to two, 13 to 11. And they have their eye on Hillary O'Connell now. Moen for three, no good. Rebound picked off by Amanda Robinson. UMBC with a chance to tie with the deuce, take the lead with the tray. Good play. Pass intended for Rhodey, not going to buy us by O'Connor, and we got another timeout on the floor. 11.25 left until the halftime intermission. Our score, IPFW 13, UMBC 11. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on out. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at the Gate Center, along with Dave Scout, and this is Mike Moss. IPFW hanging on to a 13-11 lead, and uh, quick look at some of the numbers, Dave. These teams are pretty similar. Both have five field goals at the moment. Uh, Baltimore's taking three more shots, so they're not shooting quite as well. UMBC with a shot, no good. Loose ball. Another shot put up and in. I believe that was by Offensive Brody. rebounds have kept uh, the Baltimore club in the ball game. Tied at 13. Again, that collapsing 2-3 zone for UMBC. There's Tina Mowen, 15-footer, short. The rebound controlled by Mackenzie Butler. Here come the Retrievers. They're going to run a little bit. And now they slow it down. It's a good move. They saw they didn't have the layup, so they brought the ball back out and go into their weave down the Give middle. Give and go. Hatton misses the shot. It's about, Johnson with the board. About the third time they've missed one right inside, so their offense is getting them the shot they want. AJ, number three, moving to her right. Skip pass back. 12 on the shot clock. Johnson wants to drive. Stops, pops, and hits. The juniors from Kokomo with their first points of the night. The two-point Mastodon lead, 15 to 13, as we near the midway mark of the first half. Robinson give and go, and the Dons have to be careful as Rody now has a half a dozen. Fell asleep on the defense that time. Should never be able to get that bounce pass down the lane. Tied at 15, under 10 minutes to go here in the first half. And go, swing. There's Huna, triple team, tries to get the shot. And she is knocked to the floor. She'll shoot a couple. We're going to call the foul on Mackenzie Butler. Her first, team first for UMBC. Julianne Huna, 6'3 sophomore from Halle, Germany. Has a lot of potential, Doc. She knocks the first free throw down. Good free throw. It's her third point of the night. She'll get another one here momentarily. Starla Williams at the scores table. That free throw is good. Williams in for Huna. And in for UMBC is number 32, Nicole Dixon. 
Six foot junior from Randallstown, Maryland. IPFW putting some pressure on the ball. Yeah, they can do that with uh, John Lewis, Carlisle, and AJ up front. They're quick, and they can really make it tough to handle that ball. Once they get it across, then it's no problem. Again, UMBC being patient. They spread the floor out. And they look for the back weave. door cutter. Put you to sleep with the weave, and all of a sudden you've got somebody coming from behind. Whistle, and a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Tina Mullen of IPFW. That is her first, team third. Not shooting foul. Brittany Hughes, number 10, back in the lineup for the Retrievers. And... Official scorer wants to make sure he has the right person to mark the foul on. Hughes gets the ball inside. Down to 9-10 to go here in the first half. Macedon's on top, 17-15. Over the visitors from Maryland. Whistle away from the ball. They're going to call Ashley Johnson with her first foul. Four team fouls now on IPFW. Coach Patterson has some more advice for the officials. <laughs> like most coaches do. Three-point shot by Pender. No good. And this time the foul is going to go on UMBC's Nicole Dixon. Her first team second. Yeah, there haven't been a lot of fouls so far in this game. So here come the Mastodons. Ashley Johnson bringing the ball up over midcourt. Pass to Kelly Boyd. In the lineup for the first time tonight. Number 52. Starla Williams. Down to 10 in the shot clock. Inside pass intended for Moen. Knocked out of bounds. IPFW will retain possession, but the shot clock shows seven. Seven seconds left on this possession. Johnson to inbound it. Down to four. Jana Lewis has got to pop it. Johnson, three-pointer. No good. Boyd with the offensive board. Now it's knocked away. Yeah, AJ Dave, did. they just didn't recognize the That's time right. situation. She didn't have much choice. She had to put it up. Pinder, cross-court pass. Hughes for three, off the rim, no. JLC, John Lewis Carlisle with the rebound. There's the sophomore from Kentucky. Nice feed, Boyd, baseline jumper is good. Nice move by Kelly. Senior from North Judson. Took the pass and all in one motion went up with a nice soft jump shot. Stretches the Macedon lead to four, 19 to 15. It's been near the seven and a half minute mark. <coughs> Backdoor cut, shot up and in by Mattia Pender. She now has five. And the lead cut to two. It's a little bit like watching the quarterback's eyes. That time if you watched 32 and she had the ball, she was looking for that backdoor pass. She got it. 12 on the shot clock. Both teams patiently trying to run their offenses. AJ in the lane, pops it up, no. Williams fights for it, and they're gonna call a pushing foul on Starla Williams. A good hustle. As she knocks Hughes to the deck. Timeout on the floor, 6.59 left here in the first half. Mastodon's clinging to a two-point lead, 19-17. Back with more IPFW women's basketball in a moment here on College from Six Sports. Yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sidelines, and it's a... If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. 
Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Welcome back, everybody, once again to the Hilliard Gave Sports Center on a cold winter. Well, it's not winter yet, Dave, <laughs> but almost winter's night. IPFW yep. leading UMBC 1917 along with Dave Scout. And this is Mike Maz. That last foul was called on Starla Williams, her first team fifth. And here come the UMBC Retrievers. Came to town with a record of six and two. They run that Princeton style offense, methodical, hypnotizing type of offense. There's a three point shot up and in by Heather Lutro. The young lady from Kokomo. And that gives UMBC the lead, 20 to 19. Six and a half minutes to go until halftime. Give and go, AJ. Shot of Lewis Carlisle, long distance. No good, one and out. Nice offensive board by Johnson. The putback is a little strong, however. And here come the retrievers. Brittany Hughes. Tries to drive. Shot blocked. Nice. Oh, they're going to say. Yeah. Traveling it, by Johnson. Yeah. She couldn't get a hold of the ball and get her feet down. Bruce Patterson asking one of the officials was it a travel on us or travel on them? Well, we had the ball. So I guess it would have to. Yeah. Okay. Decision has been explained to Bruce. UMBC with the basketball. Pender, the long two. Pia Pender now with seven points, averaging 15 a contest. They aggressively go after the hoop on those out of bounds situations. There's a reach around foul call and he called on Brittany Hughes. Her first, just the third team foul on UMBC. Comes with five minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. IPFW trailing 22 to 19. Johnson gets it out to Carla. Back to AJ. Looking for somebody to move. Hillary O'Connell back in for the Dons. Johnson for three off the rim, no good. Hughes with the board. Long pass. And they're gonna say that Hatton was on the baseline. We were told by one of the UMBC assistant coaches tonight that although they do run the Christian style offense, if they get a chance, they may try to run the ball a little bit. Three turnovers now on UMBC. Now they're extending the defense just a little bit with a trap out front. 5.20 to go in the first half. Three point. Need to find Hillary Lee. and get a three point shot up there. Lewis Carlisle double teamed. Down to eight in the shot clock. There's Hillary. AJ in the lane. The Boyd off the glass and in. Nice feed from Ashley Johnson to Kelly Boyd. And Boyd now has four points. The lead cut to one, 22 to 21. We're under five minutes to go here in the first half. Brittany Hughes started by Johnson. Russell brings it back out. Ah, almost a wayward pass. Picked off by Hughes. Five on the shot clock. Hughes forces a shot up and hits it. Oh, left-handed, too. Left -handed. Mommy, look what I found. <laughs> Brittany Hughes, her second field goal of the night. The lead back up to three, 24 to 21. Lewis Carlisle tries to tie it. No good. Pender with the board. A 30-second timeout called by UMBC. Comes with 4.20 to go here in the first half. Here you see the uh, 
Retrievers gathering around their head coach. Keep up with the IPFW women's basketball team each week through the season by tuning in to the Bruce Patterson Show. You can be seen Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, Thursdays at 7.30, and Saturdays at 12 noon right here on College 56. Bruce Patterson is joined by yours truly, Mike Miles. We review the recent games, talk with players and guests, and preview upcoming action. Again, that's the Bruce Patterson Show. Catch it Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, Thursdays at 7.30, and Saturdays at 12 noon right here on College Cable Access Channel 56. Bruce now in his fifth year here at IPFW. After a very successful career across town at the University of St. Francis. Brittany Hughes being hounded by Ashley Johnson. Good pressure defense by Ashley. Robinson hands it off to Pender. Pender trying to shake free of O'Connell. Kicks it out. Shot up and in by Robinson. Amanda Robinson with her first bucket of the night. Largest lead of the night now for UMBC. It's five at 26 to 21. O'Connell, shot try a long ball. Can't yes. Leave, can't leave her open. It was a two. Hillary is keeping this team in the ball game. That's her fourth three-pointer of the night. Yeah, well, it was a two. They they signaled the two on that one. Messing up my scoreboard. <laughs> Making 11 points now for Hillary. Robinson, nice cut off by Boyd. 16-footer in and out. Fight for the loose ball. Picked up by Hillary O'Connell. Come the Dons, trailing by three. AJ, watched by Brittany Hughes. I feel that it seems to be a little bit frustrated by the uh, defense, which now I think is maybe uh, Much more back to man to man. Yeah. Cross pass inside to Starla, tries to hook around. Yeah. And they're going to call her for the wrap around, taking her offhand. Getting an advantage to move toward the basket. Well, we've got our uh, final under four minute time media timeout called here at the Gate Center. 2.55 left until halftime. Our score, UMBC 26, IPFW 23. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on College 56 Sports. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Back at the gate center, 2.55 left in the first half. IPFW trailing Maryland, Baltimore County, 26-23. Retrievers have the basketball. Here's Brittany Hughes, number 10, their point guard, averaging nearly six assists a contest. Amanda Robinson cut off, give and go to Pender. They just move it around. Before the shot, three-second call. Called. I'm not sure if it was on Voss or Robinson, one of the two. Break for the Dons. Turnover number four for UMBC, and here comes IPFW on the attack. It's a call you rarely see anymore, although it could be called a lot of times. Johnny Lewis Carlisle hands the ball off to O'Connell. Dons running a little bit of a weave. Lock pass for Huna, double teamed. Julianne tries the shot, no good, fights for the ball. But it's controlled by UMBC. As uh, Hughes goes right around Ashley Johnson and Runa to score a third bucket of the night. Yeah, the defense didn't rotate over and stop her coming down the line. I hope they realize that Brittany Hughes is left-handed. Yeah, yeah. I just come to that realization. 
pass intended for Huna, picked off. Here comes Hughes, kick it back. Pender wide open, long two. Nine points now for Matia Pender. And the Dons have got to stop this little bit of a run with a minute and a half to go. It's 30 to 23. They're out of sync on the offensive end, having a hard time. Turnaround jumper off the rim, no good by John Lewis Carlisle, picked off by Hughes. We'll be seeing now slows it up. Robinson off Puna. Shot is good. Nice move on the post. And a Robinson with four points. Nice soft touch. All of a sudden that lead balloons up to nine. Final minute of the first half. 32-23. Retrievers on top. IPFW needs to find Hillary O'Connell set a pick for her and let her get one of those jump shots. And right now she's trying to set a pick for Ashley Johnson. Five on the shot clock. AJ stops, pops, no good. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by Amanda Robinson. Tina Mowen back in the lineup for IPFW and making her first appearance of the night. Number 23, Nan Moore, freshman out of Detroit. Kind of surprised uh, Bruce Patterson hasn't called a timeout yet. 39.3 seconds left to the break. Moore looking for somebody in gray. Gets it to Starla Williams. It's about an eight second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. Huna, long jumper off the mark. Nice rebound by Moore. Yeah. Ball goes out of bounds. They say off of the foot of Nan Moore to her chagrin. She had good position on that rebound. Did a nice job getting the ball and just couldn't control it. Shot clock off. Down to 20 seconds, still halftime. Hughes watched by Moore. My guess is uh, Marilyn will play for one last shot. Down to six seconds, five seconds. Inside pass, Hughes, left hand shot up and gets the friendly roll with a second to go. And there goes the horn, signifying the end of the first half of play. That's the break, as the team said in the locker room. It is the visitors from Maryland, UMBC, leading IPFW 34-23. Back to recap this first half of action in a moment. Again, you're watching IPFW women's basketball on College 56 Sports. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Welcome back, everybody, again to the Hillier Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW, along with Dave Scout. This is Mike Moss. We are at halftime of our women's basketball game featuring the retrievers of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and the IPFW Mastodons, UMBC, with a 34-23 halftime lead. And Dave, this game started off on the plus side for IPFW. Julianne Huna scored the first points of the game. Don's actually controlled the play, hit some of their shots, especially Hillary O'Connell. Yeah. Early on, had a lead, and as you remarked to me during the break, UMBC showed poise. They run a Princeton-style offense, and for those of you that don't know the Princeton-style of offense, it's basically a weave on the outside, looking for what they call a backdoor cut under uh, underneath where the team basically tries to lull the defense to sleep. Which they did too many and times. UMBC did uh, execute that offense very, very well. And um, Yeah, they, they were patient because IPFW had a lead back at, I don't know, something like 1917. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, Baltimore came back, stayed right with their offense, ran it on, and, and here they are sitting with an 11-point lead now. Well, we expected somewhat of a low-scoring contest coming into this game. UMBC averaged uh, 66 points a game to IPFW's 60, and thanks to Chrissy Francis, the IPFW Assistant Sports Information Director, we've got a little play-by-play -play sheet, little cheat sheet, so to speak, and a quick look at that, Dave. Again, IPFW led 2-0, 5-2, 10-7, 13-9, and uh, then UMBC came back. Last Mastodon lead was at 1917 with uh, seven minutes to go in the half. Yeah. And then UMBC started a charge and uh, went on a bit of a run, took the lead uh, on a three-point shot by Heather Lutro, one of the three native Hoosiers on the UMBC yeah. squad, and they gradually extended it to the halftime score of 34 to 23. Yeah, the last seven and a half minutes, IPFW had two two-point uh, field goals, and that was it. The largest, uh, there were four ties, three lead changes, and the largest lead by either team was 11 by UMBC. We will take another break, and when we come back, Dave and I will tell you a little bit about what else is going on here on campus. Again, our halftime score, UMBC 34, IPFW 23. Back in a moment with more IPFW women's basketball here on College 56 Sports. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat! Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum? Agaricus Bisporus? Huh? Allium Sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man! <laughs> Honey! Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Oh, yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sideline, and it's a... If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Do you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. 
Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gay Sports Center, along with Dave Scout. This is Mike Moss, where it's halftime. IPFW trails UMBC 34-23. And, Doc, we want to talk a little bit about things that are happening on campus here. Of course, the women's basketball team playing tonight. They had a hoopla event a couple of Sundays ago at the yeah. Coliseum, which went off very well. It was a really great uh, event. It had uh, two nice uh, ball games of the women's sports. And among other things, there was uh, an effort there to recognize an outstanding woman in basketball, which this year the first recipient uh, was Terry Rosensky. And Terry had, uh, back a few years ago, late 80s and early 90s, was the basketball coach here at IPFW. Did an outstanding job, brought in uh, some great recruits, uh, actually took the campus to its uh, first NCAA appearance in 90 and she left the team that, uh, in 91 when she uh, went elsewhere into Pennsylvania she left the team here that uh, made its second appearance in 92 so that was uh, that was a great event to see Terry again and uh, for them to bring uh, her back and receive an award which is named after Mary Schreiber who was uh, the first woman administrator here in uh, the athletics program at IPFW. And the men's team, of course, had that great effort last Sunday night at the Coliseum. 9,000 fans looking on, and the Dons nearly pulled off the upset before falling to Notre Dame 65-63. Uh, the men's team, as we speak, are playing on the road at West Lafayette against the Purdue Boilermakers. And if we get a score, we will pass it along. But uh, some good things happening here on the hard court for both IPFW's men's and women's basketball teams. We've got one more break we're going to take. When we come back, Doc and I will talk about the first half numbers and what IPFW has to do to get back into this ball game. Again, it's halftime here at the Gate Center. IPFW trails UMBC 34-23. You're watching IPFW women's basketball on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56.
Welcome back once again to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center along with Dave Scout. This is Mike Moss. Teams warming up for the start of the second half. First half numbers for UMBC. They were 16 of 30 from the floor for 53%. 2 of 8 from three-point range for 25%. Ironically, they did not get to the foul line. And uh, you see uh, some of the other numbers here. They had eight assists, 16 rebounds, and four turnovers. IPFW, 36% shooting, 9 of 25 from the floor. They were uh, 3 of 10 from three-point range for 30%, and they were 2 of 2 at the charity stripe. The Dons had five assists, collected 14 boards, and turned the ball over six times. Individually, UMBC led by their leading scorer, Mattia Pender, with nine points on four of five shooting. Eight points for Brittany Hughes. Six points from Sherry Rohde, five points from Heather Luttro, four points from Amanda Robinson, and two points from Morgan Hatton. For IPFW, Hillary O'Connell, four of four from the floor, including three of three from three-point range for 11 points. Only down in double figures. Four points apiece from Julianne Huna and Kelly Boyd. Two points apiece from Ashley Johnson and Jenna Lewis Carlisle. And a few others have played but have not scored. Doc, we sent you on a fishing expedition yeah. to see how the men were doing against Purdue and what's the score? A little, little fact-finding mission and uh, in the sometime in the second half. And I wasn't sure uh, what he said, but it was in the, in the second half. And they're down uh, 15. IPFW? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I know Purdue was getting a new player, a transfer from the University of Connecticut, making his first appearance tonight. Again, you see the leading scorers there. Pender with nine, Hughes with eight, Rody with six for UMBC. O'Connor actually has 11, Huna and Boyd four apiece. Doc, what do the Dons have to do to get back into this contest? Well, the offense went stale there for a while, Mike, in that uh, last seven, eight minutes of the first half. Uh, Got to come out and be a little crisper with the with the offense, get uh, some people loose, and get some shots to fall. Now you saw a little shot there of the head coach for UMBC, Phil Stern, in his fourth year at UMBC, 10th year overall. As you mentioned Bruce Patterson in his fifth year here at IPFW. As uh, you get a glance there at their retrievers, getting their final instructions from their head coach. Wouldn't be too surprised, Mike, if maybe IPFW came out in a zone because we haven't been able to, to shut off that uh, backdoor cut and down the lane passes where uh, they've been hurting us badly with uh, the easy shots. So maybe we, we'll try to plug the middle or it can be done with man-to-man -man also. Macedon's breaking their huddle. O'Connell, Huna, and we see a couple of new players, Nan Moore. Natalie Roberts, number 12, Nan Moore's 23, and Pavla Pletkova, a freshman from the uh, Czech Republic. So Bruce Patterson shaking things up here to start this second half. Yeah. UMBC will have the basketball. They'll be going from left to right on your screen. And you see Brittany Hughes, the fine point guard. Like IPFW out in the man-to-man -man defense to start this uh, second 20 minutes of action. Ball nearly tipped away. Yeah, Hillary got uh, her hand in the passing lane. Voss misses the shot. Loose ball. Moore gets it, and they say out of bounds. Well, actually, did she call timeout? She called a timeout. Yeah, one of those. What's it? Those 30 speed stretch to 60s. <laughs> and uh, will give us a chance to. Tell you about uh, tickets to IPFW athletic events. Four tickets. Call 260-481-6000. Or you can go to the IPFW athletics website, www.ipfw.edu slash athletics. Tickets are available for individual events or mini season ticket packages. Those packages are available for the remainder of both the men's and women's basketball seasons. Again, the phone number 260-481-6000 or go online at www.ipfw.edu slash athletics. Well, yeah, this second half uh, lineup for IPFW, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, they're really playing a pressure defense. Now we'll see what they can do on the offensive end. I guess, Dave, what really surprises me a little bit, Hillary O'Connell, 4 of 4 from the floor, including three trays. She is the offensive yeah. spark plug, and she's not in the lineup, so. Well, she is now. Just You're kidding. right. Yeah. 
short break, so we'll see what happens. He has the ball right in front of us. Yeah, tonight you just about have to have Hillary in there with her shooting. Lob pass, give and go. Roberts from the foul line. Yes, Natalie. The high with her first points yeah. of the night. Makes it 34-25. The deficit now in single digits. And again, that hypnotizing Princeton offense. And just work it around. Hughes, three-pointer is perfect. Brittany Hughes now with 11 points. And the lead is a dozen, 37 to 25. There's Moore being double teamed, looking for some help. Pass intended for Roberts, picked off by Rohde. UMBC looking to apply the knockout punch right now with 18 and a half minutes to go. They stretch it out. Tick tock, tick tock. High post is Voss. Low block, shot up and in by Sherry Rohde. She got a matchup inside that she liked a whole lot because she had a small defender on her. Sherry Rohde with eight points. The lead is up to 14. And again, more. And Baltimore is now coming out, uh, Mike, and they're uh, trapping. Bruce Patterson thought that Nan Moore was fouled, but Gary Roberts, who has the ball in front of us, says no, sir, he was not. She was not. Morty inbound it. Gets it to Hillary O'Connell. Inside feed. Julianne Huna is hit as she goes up. Nice pass, nice move. Everything gets back up to the line. Karen Voss will pick up the foul. Her first, team first. Comes with 18.04 left here in the second half. And Julianne Huna, who had the only free throws of either team in the first half, goes back to the line for two more. Let's hope she can keep things perfect here tonight. First free throw is exactly that. And boy, she is really improving. I hope I don't put the hex on her, but <laughs> she started play tonight 50%, 7 of 14, and now she bangs down two. Now the Dons with full court pressure. But retrievers break it. Harlan has a couple of pretty experienced ball players, the senior and the junior, that handle that ball a lot. Draben three-point shot Ooh. is perfect. And that was a quick one too. She came off of that pick and bingo. First points of the night for Christian Draben. 42-27. Dons need to make a run. Roberts high post inside for Huna. Left hand shot off the glass and in. Julianne Huna now with eight points and a nice feed from Natalie Roberts. A little high low action. Oh, what a play. Brittany Hughes drove it inside and dished it off to Rody for another deuce. Nice pass, nice basket. Use the glass. You can see why Brittany Hughes one of the leading assists. Yeah. One of the leaders in assists in the country, nearly six a game. Now, now is back into his own defense. Lakova looking for a cutter, doesn't find one, kicks it back out. Down to five on the shot clock. Mort may not know it. Lakova, left handed three point shot off the rim, no good. And are they gonna, who are they gonna call? They're going to call Aaron Voss for smacking the head of Julianne Huna. <coughs> Voss picks up her second foul. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd ever seen that signal before, but... Pop on the head. Yep. Right smack dab in the middle of the forehead. Dons retain possession. They trail by 15. Lakovic. Another blocking foul, and I think it's going to be on Voss again. Let's make sure. A nice aggressive move by Blackova. Took the baseline, dished off. Aaron Voss has picked up three fouls in three and a half minutes. Well, she won't pick up any more now for a while. As Luttrell comes back on the floor. Billy O'Connor up top. Blackova. Right now the Dons have a couple of freshmen on the floor. Two sophomores and a junior. 
Larry O'Connell, 15 on the shot clock, into Roberts. Natalie pulls up and knocks one down. Nice aggressive move to the hoop. Natalie Roberts now with four points. The lead down to 13. A collision, no call. Nice feed to Robinson inside. Amanda Robinson all alone underneath. Picks up her sixth point. Well, you said earlier that uh, Baltimore will move out and get the ball down the floor quickly if they get a chance, and they've been doing that here lately. Lead back up to 15. Kuna on the wing. Bounce pass to Pakova. Draws a double team. Julianne Huna, wide of the mark. Hughes with the rebound. Brittany up the floor. Three-point shot by Draven is good. Second three-pointer for Kristen Draven. She's been looking to pull the trigger twice, and bingo, she got them both. And right now, UMBC, 5 of 11 from three-point range. Hitting nearly 60% of their shots overall from the floor. IPFW's got to get a little life into this offense. So, uh, they need to keep their poise as well. Yeah. Six in the shot clock. Moore stops. 17 footer. Yes. The freshman from Detroit with her first points of the night. Cuts the lead to 16. 49 33 with 14 40 to go. Give and go, and the ball is kicked by Huna. And we have a timeout on the floor. 14.37 to go here in the second half. It's UMBC 49, IPFW 33. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on College 56 Sports. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Back to the action, you just missed another three-point field goal by Christian Draben, who was on fire. Nine points, all from long distance, all scored here in the second 20 minutes of play. It's 52-33, the lead is up to 19. 14 minutes to go, and foul on the floor. And it uh, looks like it's gonna be called on Christian Draben. Her first, team fourth. Tony Matea Pinder back in the lineup. For and Brown. Moore inbound it. Dahuna. Give and go, and the ball is knocked away. Good double team by UMBC, denying Julianne Huna the ball down low. Matea Pinder, her specialty, the three point shot. <laughs> and she makes it. And it looks like UMBC calls a 30-second timeout. I think so. That's a little bit surprising. Well, I think there was something he wanted to get uh, squared away there. Join head coach Dane Fife on College 56 for Inside Don's Basketball with highlights and insights from the Macedons from the coach and his guest. They're truly Mike Miles host the show. 
You can be seen Tuesday nights at 10.30, Thursdays at 7 o'clock, Fridays at 6.30, and Saturdays at 12.30. Again, Inside Don's Basketball with head coach Dane Fife. Catch it right here on College Cable Access Channel 56. And one thing I found out, uh, Doc, is that Dane has a sense of humor and yeah. the ability to land the zinger. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what happens. The Mastodons have a long road to hoe, down 22. And this zone is uh, just giving them fits. Moore tries to hit Huna, throws it to the side. Here comes Hughes in a three on two break. Draben on the feed from Hughes. And right now, everything going the way of the black, gold, and white. Yeah, that was kind of a clinic on how to run a fast break, three on two. Kova with the basketball, moves to her left. Ball knocked out of bounds by Brittany Hughes. The Dons just can't solve this zone. Stacy Hunt, number three, a 5'7 freshman from Davidsonville, Maryland, makes her first appearance of the night. And then you see a frustrated IPFW coaching staff. More for three. Off the rim, no. Rebound pulled down by Rody. And here we go back to the Princeton, off Princeton offense. Yeah, and then the uh, point guard holds that ball until everybody gets in position and then they start. Robinson for three off the mark. Moore travels with the basketball. She slipped and fell as she gained control. And it's a yeah. turnover. It's unfortunate. She was in the right spot, but at the wrong time. <laughs> Starla Williams in for Julianne Huna. In by the basketball will be Stacy Hunt. Ball knocked out of bounds, and they say last touch by UMBC. So oh, yeah. a somewhat rare turnover by the Retrievers, only their fifth of the night. And here come the Dons, needing some instant offense. They trail 57-33 with 12.18 to go. Hillary O'Connell, boy, they're keeping an eye on her after her nice first half performance. Pakova inside, nice feed to Roberts. Reverse layup, no foul, no foul called. To the ire of Bruce Patterson. Here comes UMBC. And they're gonna say, she out of bounds, baby. Stepped on the end line. Yep, nope, foul. Oh, she, okay. She hooked her. Rody will pick up the foul. Her first, and again, we have a timeout on the floor. <coughs> Excuse me, 11.57 to go. Don's trailing 57-33. We'll take a break. You're watching IPFW Women's Basketball on Cowan 56 Sports. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. <laughs> Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll be talking about the upcoming visit to IPFW by Dr. Richard Light, a Harvard professor who's done extensive research on what college students really think about college. And we'll talk with some award-winning athletes, not for their prowess on the fields of play, but for their philanthropy efforts. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon on College Access Channel 56. Welcome back, everybody, along with Dave Scout and Mike Moss here at the Hilly Gate Sports Center. The Dons trailing 57-33. We'll put the ball in play with 11.57 to go. Nan Moore, number 23, brings it up over midcourt. And the scoring woes of the first, uh, or the last seven and a half minutes of the first half have carried over. Oh, and Roberts and Robinson second. really dueling underneath. 
Hillary O'Connell for long range. Yes, boy, she is the one real bright spot. Yep. Five of five now, four of four from three-point range for the second leading all-time score in Warsaw. Girls basketball. Yeah, she's looking for the ball, doing a great job once she gets it. And there's a uh, reach over foul going to be caught, I believe, by Natalie Roberts. Yeah. Her first, that's the first team foul on IPFW here in the second half. Comes with 11.15 to go. Stacy Hunt gets the ball. Mattia Pender commits a violation. She wanted to put that ball up there in a hurry, and uh, the defender was right there. Shut, just her, the, shut her down. Just the sixth turnover for UMBC. IPFW turned it over 10 times. Lakova looking inside for Williams. Four shot up, no good. Ball goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with IPFW. No change of possession, so the shot clock's still at 13. Look from here a little bit, Doc, like Starla was just a touch too far underneath. Yeah, didn't have a lot of room to operate. Back to goes. Roberts picks it off. Plakova, five on the shot clock. Shot up, no good. Picked off by... Hatton. Cross court pass to Hunt. Thirteen on the shot clock and uh, oh, there's a new rule, Doc. I meant to tell you about the ball was kicked out of bounds, but uh, when it's under 15 seconds to go, it goes back. It to goes 15. back to 15 and yeah. not to 30. Yeah. And the same thing applies on the men's side. That's a good rule. No reason to get a full shot clock. Robinson misses on a long two, but UMBC gets the offensive boards. Unfortunately, the two people from IPFW who had good position were small. Couldn't get the ball. Pull-up jumper is missed by Butler. And IPFW comes down with a basketball. Here's Van Moore. Lead pass to Starla Williams. Kicks it out, pass intended for Roberts is picked off. Four on three break. Hunt off the glass, no good, but she draws the foul. Probably on Man Moore. He yeah. called it, Dave. Moore picks up the foul, her first, right at the 10 minute mark here, the second half. Second team foul, and here is Stacy Hunt taking the first UMBC free throws of the night, 30 minutes into the contest. And she knocks down the first for her first point of the night. Puna and Tina Moen back in the lineup for the Dons. Well, UMBC showing the fans here in attendance why they are 6-2. and two. Trailed early, but then Rike or gained the lead, and they've held it for quite a long time. Second free throw also good. Would have been a lane violation that time had that... Shot not going in. Pavla Petkova from the Czech Republic. Katina Moen from Norway. The three foreign players on the floor at the same time for Bruce Patterson's Mastodons. Moen has it stripped away by Hunt. It's largely at its finest. Give and go. Down low. Hunt. Jumper. Good. You know, any one of four people that time could have taken a jump shot, but they kept passing the ball until they got the one wide open. 61-36 with 9.18 to go. Don's on the short end of the score, unfortunately. Moen pass for Roberts, deflected and picked off by UMBC. Hatton, long pass down floor. Shot is up and missed by Pender, but she is fouled and Mattia will go to the strike. Julianne Huna picks up the foul, her first of the night. Third team foul. Pender will go back to the line. Mattia Pender, 6'1 senior from, I hope I pronounce it correctly, Sibinek, Croatia. It's close enough for me. <laughs> She's a good looking ball player. She moves well, big girl. 
Missed the first one. Here comes the second. She didn't follow through on that first one. She did on the second one. Makes a difference. Knocks that one down. She will have a seat on the bench. Replaced by Lutro. And uh, she will sit down with 13 points. Too shy of her season average. Dons continue to try to work it inside. Petkova for three off the mark. Rebounded by Luttrell. Barely. Long feed to Dixon off the glass, no good. Fight for the loose ball and Pavla Petkova comes up with it. She's gonna push it up the floor. And Maryland's getting to play a lot of players. That'll probably help them with their... Roberts! Baseline jumper bounces around and through. Natalie Roberts now with six points. All here in the second half. It's 62-38 to 38 with 8.15 to go. They got to continue. Oh, to nice give-and-go yeah. feed from Butler to Hatton. Oh, when the pass is worked to perfection, it's a joy to watch. Yeah, that was Except it. if you're not a DFW <laughs> fan. That still was an awfully nice pass. Moen cut off by Butler. Swing around. Ashley Johnson back on the floor for the Dons. Work it around. Baseline. Moen pops one through. Tina Moen from Oslo, Norway gets her first point to the night. It's 64 to 40 as we did the seven and a half minute mark. It was a nice baseline jump shot. Again, UMBC just patiently working the ball around. Not seemingly phased by whatever defense IPFW throws at him. Long three-point shot by Hatton is good. Boy, UMBC is really warming up from the outside. Uh, they are now 8 of 15 from long range. That's 53%. When you hit the long shots over 50%, you are really cooking. Yeah, if I remember right, in the first half they were 1 for 7. Some, somewhere along no, the way. No, one point they were 0 for 7. Yeah. Hunt kicks it out. Another three-pointer on the way and good. Talk about a clinic. Is what UMBC is putting on right now. Up 70 to 40 as we near the six and a half minute mark. Well, somehow. Pass picked off, intended for Roberts. Dish off right side, Hunt off the glass, a little strong. Ball out of bounds and it'll stay with UMBC and now a virtual plethora of substitutes. Boyd and Jenny Green in for IPFW. And we've got timeout called on the floor, 6.21 to go. Dodge trail by a punch, back with more IPFW women's basketball in a moment here on College 56 Sports. Yes, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40 of Dedham. He's going down the sideline, and it's up. If legislation being considered now in the U.S. Congress passes, you won't see your local team or your government or local events and news on this TV channel. Telecom giants want to end the funding source for this and other local channels. And with such action, end your rights to watch or produce local programming. Don't let local access become Won't See TV. Go to SaveMyFreeSpeech.net or AllianceCM.org now and learn how you can help. Become informed and contact your representatives in Washington. The time for your action is now. Otherwise, this is all you'll see here soon. Back at the Gate Center, it is 70 to 40, UMBC on top, 621 to go. And Dave, we were talking during the break, UMBC missed their first seven three-point attempts of the night, finished the first half two out of eight, and uh, here in the second half, they are seven, seven out of eight out of from eight. long distance. And my rough math, second half, that's 87% from long distance. That's a heck of a turnaround. UMBC with the basketball, and they brought in a couple of new people. Aaron Voss, number 44, with the ball. 
Number 55 is Suzanne Morris. And UNBC guilty of a traveling turnover. Turnover number seven. The Dons have turned it over 14 times. So here comes IPFW with the ball, trailing by a bunch. Jenny Green, as we said before the last break, in the lineup. Ocano tries to stay perfect. The shot is missed, but there's a foul on the three-point shot. Foss picks up her fourth foul. Here's an oddity, Dave. Oh, I take that back. There's now 16 fouls. I was going to say that Foss had picked up almost all the fouls. Another interesting statistic, Mike, is that uh, Maryland has 20 assists. 20. That's, that's awfully good offense. Hillary O'Connell at the line, knocks down the first. Oh, misses the second. Here's Patterson pleading for a lane violation, but the uh, official in front of us says no. Hillary gets one more. Going for point number 16, and she gets it. Leading the way for IPFW tonight. They still trail by 28. IPFW going with full court man-to-man -man pressure. And good play by Ashley Johnson, knocking the ball out of bounds. Pass intended for Heather Luttrell. 21 on the shot clock, 5.48 on the second half game clock. 70 to 42 our score. Visitors from Maryland, Baltimore County on top. And here again, there's all the different fragments that comprise the Princeton offense. Perimeter passing, the weaves, the cuts. Lutro from downtown, in and out, no good. AJ Ashley Johnson with the rebound and she pushes it up the floor. O'Connell for three, yes! Hillary O'Connell now has five three-point field goals tonight. Well, she's squared up to the basket when she receives it. She's ready to pull the trigger. She's done a nice job. Good pass that time from Johnson to Hillary O'Connell. Yeah. yeah. 70 to 45, 510 to go. Hunt. Back on top. Draven. Lutro off the rim, no good. Fight for the rebound. Here is O'Connell. Three on three. Hillary holds up. Gets it to Johnson. AJ looking. Lob pass. Inside for Boyd. Kelly is fouled on the way up. And the senior will go to the line to shoot two. Foul's going to be on Heather Lutro. That's her first. That is the seventh team foul. Kelly got the ball inside that time and uh, just couldn't get, get the shot off quickly enough to get the bucket and get fouled. Kelly does not get the friendly roll, misses the first free throw. It was only the second free throw attempt of the year for the senior. Comes the third, and that one's perfect. Kelly Boyd now with five points tonight. And it's 70 to 46. IPFW resorting to the full court pressure. Yeah, man to man, hoping to force a turnover, pick up a steal. Yep, get him to make a mistake. Voss, and they work it around. Hunt on the left wing. Drayden. Back and forth and back and forth. Tick tock, tick tock. And even their taller girls get out front and get involved in the. Shot up, no good. As uh, looked like, was that Luttro that went to the line, baseline? <laughs> Foul is on. Oh, they, they called it on Julianne Huna, her second. Oh, yeah. Luttro knocks down the free throw. <laughs> Well, Heather Lotro now with six points, going for point number seven. And she makes it. UMBC now five of six at the free throw line. All free throw attempts coming here in the second half. 4-10 to go. Dance trail 72-46. O'Connell again loads up and knocks it down. What a night for Hillary O'Connell. Six trays, two free throws and a deuce. And to her team race credit, they're beginning to look for her. 
give her the ball anytime they can. She is stroking it, and we have a timeout on the floor. Final media timeout of the night. Comes with 3.57 to go. Our score, 72-49 UMBC. Back with more IPFW women's basketball in a moment here on College 56 Sports. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back once again at the Hitty Gate Sports Center along with Dave Skelton, Mike Moss, 3.57 to go. UMBC leading IPFW 72-49. We will try to talk about a tremendous performance by Hillary O'Connell in these final three plus minutes, Doc. As she is nearing a career high tonight in points. Yeah, she's been just perfect in the shooting. She's 22 and her career high is 24. 15 on the shot clock for UMBC. 10 on the shot clock now. Luttrell. Five on the shot clock. Not sure they know, know about it. Draping for three and ball. What can you say? Yeah, yeah. Fourth three-point field goal for Draben tonight. Just when you play 29 seconds of great defense, that last second, the three ball goes down. Hillary. Oh, off the rim, no good, but she gets her own rebound. Yeah, she followed her shot. She's there. Picks up another loose ball. Cano is sus. Seven out of eight shooting. Tuna ball to the floor. And they call a traveling. Tuna hits her head on the floor. Slow getting up. Feeling the back of her neck. Manly Roberts is going to come in. And hopefully Julianne Huna is going to be okay. And she's going to and stay Nat on the floor. Natalie came in for Kelly there. Okay, Natalie Roberts in for Kelly Boyd. 2.55 to go. 75-49 retrievers. They have the basketball. And they throw it away. A rare turnover, just the uh, eighth of the ninth for UMBC. Jenny Green will now put the ball in play. Just to the left of our location. Green, Johnson, Roberts, Huna, and O'Connell on the floor for the Mastodons. AJ to Hillary. Up we go. Three-pointer. Oh, it sticks. It is a missed shot and a turnover, believe it or not. That's got to be good for one. <laughs> <laughs> is there a leaper in the house? Give another ball. <laughs> I can, no, Chris. <laughs> Chris Paul asked me if I can get that. My basketball playing days ended moons ago. Best you can hold the microphone. I'll go get that. I'll, get, I'll go get that. Doc said he'd go get it. 2.34 to go, and it's just the second miss of the night from the floor for Hillary O'Connell. Retrievers get the ball in, run it up the floor. They'll play a little long ball, miss the shot. That was Melissa Book missing the three-point attempt. Kuna back out to Jenny Green, to Roberts, 14-footer, short. O'Connell picks up the rebound. She and Green both hit the deck. Ashley Johnson now. Skip pass to Jenny Green. Inside for Hoonan, knocked out of bounds. 
by Luttrell. 18 in the shot clock. We're down to 2.02 on the game clock. And here you see Bruce Patterson and Chris Paul to his right, or his left, your right on the TV screen, the associate head coach. Kuna tries to find Roberts, and there's a foul going to be called. And it's going to be called on Suzanne Morris, her first team eighth. So Natalie will go to the line. With 1.57 to go. Bonus. Here we go. Look at Coach Stern and his staff. Natalie Roberts, sophomore, left-hander at the strike from Connersville, Indiana. First free throw is good. Natalie now with seven points on the night. As a team, IPFW eight out of 10 from the foul line. Yeah, they've done very well up there at the free throw line. Little string music. Second free throw on the way, and that's good as well. Eight points now by Roberts, all points scored in the second half. 75-51. Oh, good hustle. Good hustle. By Jenny. But they're going to call a foul on Jenny Green, I believe. She is one gal that really puts everything into every practice and every game. Fifth team foul here in the second half on the downs. Now we got a whistle before the ball is put into play. Somebody hold it. Roberts is going to pick up a foul. Natalie has her second, 16 foul. Stacy Hunt gets the ball inside. Morris. Watch your feet. 42 to go. UNBC in control, leading 75 to 51. Natalie, come on. Nearly a picked off pass. Kick it out. Morris for three, short. And they're going to call a jump ball between Lutro and Huna. And on the possession. IPFW. Oh, that's interesting. I thought they had the last one. <laughs> well, maybe they got two in a row. Oh, I think when the ball hit the, hit the uh, oh, slide that, yeah, goes as yeah. a, that goes as a jump ball. Let's have it. AJ tries to drive, stops, pops, and gets the friendly roll. Second field goal for Johnson. 75-53 with a minute to go here at the Gate Sports Center. This team uh, from Baltimore County, Mike, does a nice job at, at attacking the press as well as coming down and having an awfully nice set offense. It's 12 on the shot clock. We'll work it around. Oh, tries to take a shot and missing it is Book. Got too far under and the basket. And a loose ball, and it's the last touch by Stacy Hunt. The Dons will retain possession with 34.1 seconds left. AJ Ashley Johnson will put it into play. Oh, I'd like to see Hillary. Oh, pass intended for Hillary, picked off. I'd like to see her get one more shot at a, yeah. at a bucket. Yeah, they'll get one shot more clock's possession. off, so we may or may not see it. UMBC doesn't have to take a shot down to 20 seconds. We're back in the zone now, looks like. Mm -hmm. Almost looks like perhaps to some small degree the white flag is out. Yeah. Traveling called with 10.1 seconds, so the Dons will get one more crack at it. It would be nice if Hillary O'Connell could get a shot, and if she could knock down a tray, that would be a career high for her. Let's see what happens. AJ to Hillary. She's going to try. No, inside feet for Huna. That's teamwork. Yes, it is. You got to handle it. Julianne missed the shot. Another shot missed, and the horn goes off, and that is that. Final score tonight UMBC 75, IPFW 53. Players, coaches shaking hands here at center court. Well, with the wind dock, UMBC improves to 7 and 2. The Dimes drop to 1 and 7. And Don's had it going early, but UMBC proved to be the better team on this night. Yeah, in the second half particularly, uh, the Baltimore team just came out and ran their offense without uh, error almost. 
kept things alive, kept hitting the basket. Well, let's take a final quick look at some of the numbers real briefly. UMBC 30 of 55 from the floor for 55 percent. 10 of 21 from three-point range for 48 percent. 5 of 6 at the line for 83 percent. And uh, they were led in scoring. They had a number of players in double figures. It looks like uh, Kristen Draven with 14 points, 13 for Mattia Pender, 11 points for uh, Brittany Hughes, 10 points for Morgan Hatton. They were the leading scorers for UMBC. IPFW, 19 of 47 for 40 percent from the floor, 6 of 17 from three-point range, 9 of 11 at the foul line. They were led by Hillary O'Connor, only down in double figures with a game-high 22 points, 8 points for Natalie Roberts, 8 points for Julianne Huna. And um, again, Doc, UMBC hit their shots. They were patient. They ran the Princeton offense. And they uh, had, had and five people who scored between 10 and 14 points. The and Dons, that's great. The yeah. Dons did win the rebounding battle 28-24. Assist 20-12 to in favor of UMBC. Turnovers uh, a factor, 16 for the Dons, 10 for UMBC. But uh, all in all, a tough night for the Dons. And, now they've got two days to get rested up and get ready for their next opponent as Winthrop University from South Carolina comes to town for a Friday afternoon game. Yeah. And it'll be a challenge to see if this women's basketball team can shake off this defeat tonight and come back and get ready to play a Winthrop team that is under 500. Yeah, they've got to put this one behind them and go back to work, come out uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, it's a fresh start. I want to let you know that our next live telecast of IPFW Women's Basketball will be on Saturday, January 7th at 7 o'clock when the Mastodons host Radford. Men's Basketball returns to the airwaves this Thursday night, December 22nd, 7 o'clock tip-off at the Coliseum. Weber State from Utah providing the opposition. And uh, again, for the women, they're going to play Winthrop on Friday afternoon. And then next week on the 29th and 30th of December, they will be at Iowa State University. They will take on Appalachian State on the 29th and either Iowa State or another team on the 30th. So we hope that this women's team will do well. And we also want to remind you that you will see a replay of this game with Maryland-Baltimore County tonight on Wednesday, December 28th at 1 p.m. Well, at this time, we want to take a look at some replays. And just to show you how uh, things looked early on, you see Kelly Boyd with a nice move there. And another move there. And uh, some of the bright spots for IPFW. And again, what can you say about Hillary O'Connell, Doc, uh, as yeah, she just she played very well tonight. Officially, 7 of 8 from the floor, 6 of 6 from 3-point range, 2 of 3 at the foul line, 22 points, 4 rebounds, only committed 1 foul. And um, she just did a tremendous job tonight. But unfortunately, you can't play one on five and That's be successful. Right. And UMBC had all the components going, the inside game, the outside game, the patient offense. They weren't rattled uh, when Hillary hit the shots defensively. And uh, the final score was 75-53. Yeah, UMBC came out and uh, even got awfully good production out of their bench. In, in addition to the five kids in double figures, there were several others that uh, just played uh, great ball. They, they fit they fit the offensive style that they run super. Well, you stop and think. We mentioned at the start of the telecast that UMBC had three players from Indiana. They all started tonight. Kristen Draben was their leading scorer, as we said, with uh, 14 points. Mm -hmm. You had Sherry Rohde did a lot of work underneath early. She played her high school ball at Franklin Central. She ended up with 10. Uh, Draven played her high school ball at Avon High School near Indianapolis. And then Heather Lutro was a teammate of Ashley Johnson of IPFW at Kokomo, at Kokomo. High School. And Lutro hit a long ball, had a couple of free throws, ended up with seven points tonight. So I know they had friends and family here tonight, and they're going to see them again Thursday night when the UMBC plays at Butler, Butler. at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So, um, again, a good night for UMBC, a tough night for IPFW, and it's back of the drawing board with Winthrop coming to town on Friday afternoon. Yep, we got to take, uh, take the positives and build on them and uh, go after the next one. Well, Doc, I'm enjoying this was the first of six telecasts that we worked together. We're scheduled to work this year, and let's see if the next five can have a better result. We'll have to work on that. Also have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We'll get together again in early January. Well, 
We want to thank uh, Comcast Cablevision for their help in bringing you tonight's telecast. We also want to thank the College 56 production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cablevision, as we said, the IPFW Learning Resource Center, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College 56 sports telecast. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this event without expressed written consent is strictly prohibited. We hope you've enjoyed this telecast of IPFW Sports, if not the outcome. And we thank you again for joining us this evening. For Dave Scout, and this is Mike Ma saying so long for now. Again, our final score here tonight at the Hilliard Gates Sports Center was... 70. IPFW losing to UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County by a score of 75 to 53. And until January 7th, we wish you a very happy holiday season as we bid you adieu now from the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. <laughs>